Hey, hey, y'all. We are Expression PR. At the beginning of the semester, we set out to express the ideas and the values of our client who we felt couldn't adequately express those ideas and values for themselves. Um, we were very excited to set out with this mission because as a group, we really thought that public relations is all about kind of representing someone um, who isn't quite ready to re represent themselves yet or who, someone who just needs a little bit of help with it. My name is Dylan Hellpower, and I am the account liaison for Expression PR. Ramon Hardy, I serve as the co-strategy and research director. Sierra Winston, and I was the event director. Cassie Hart, and I served as co-strategy and research director. Madeline Elliott, also co-strategy and research director. Alex Mitchell, writing director. Olivia Vada, design director. So like I said, I was the account liaison this semester. Um, my primary job was to keep in contact with our wonderful client, Miss Pam, and the Greater Baton Rouge Hope Academy. Um, speaking of the Greater Baton Rouge Hope Academy, it was founded in 2007 as a 501c3 nonprofit organization, um, which you guys will hear a little bit more about what that means later. Um, their main goal is to provide assistance for students with learning disabilities in three ways. So they provide social, emotional, and academic assistance to the students of their school. Um, they have a very specific mission, and so their mission is to meet the unique needs of students who have those learning disabilities, and they do that by using a conventional school setting to teach the students in unique ways um, to lead happy and healthy lives. Currently, they admit students K through 12th grade from nine parishes in Louisiana, and as always, they do want to continue that and, and grow that. Um, they accept students with learning disabilities such as autism, Asperger's, Down syndrome, ADHD, and more. Um, additionally, they even provide resources for students who maybe they don't want to necessarily receive a high school diploma, but they just want to learn some everyday situations. Um, and you'll hear some specific resources about how they do that. They really are big into focusing on each student as an individual rather than um, a group of students in a classroom. And so the way they do that is they create goals and um, accomplishments for each student to reach for. And they really recognize each student when they reach those goals. And so that fosters a culture of um, inclusion and fosters a, um, a culture of positivity and of confidence. Because each time a student reaches their goal, they gain that confidence for that real life situation that they're trying to learn about. Um, so now that you know more about the culture and kind of what Hope Academy is all about, Olivia is going to talk more in detail about Hope Academy. Yes, as most PR agencies, Expression PR conducted a SWOT analysis. We found that Hope Academy's main strength was the fact that they have low staff to student ratios. Another strength that Hope Academy has is the Functional Life Skills Lab. Um, this lab is made for students, primarily older students, who would like to learn those life skills maybe not looking for a diploma. Uh, main weakness that Hope Academy has, uh, they have limited funds to support day-to-day -day, uh, funding and also student scholarships. Another weakness is that Hope has a goal to accept all students with emotional, medical, um, and maybe certain behavioral um, circumstances, but currently um, they're unable to do that. An opportunity that Hope Academy has uh, has had this semester is to work with Expression PR to promote awareness um, and also raise funding for the organization. Another opportunity is um, Pam, Pam Chenevere. She's the development director and she has uh, connections with the Baton Rouge community. Um, it turned out to help us with our campaign, um, providing us uh, donations and uh, volunteers. Uh, a threat that Hope Academy has is that their lease is ending at the end of the year. Um, and they are trying to pull together funding so that they can stay at their current location. And lastly, uh, the lack of awareness uh, for the school is taking a toll with, um, you know, just the funding in general. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Maddie. She's going to talk to you more about research. Okay, so before we conducted any primary research, we really delved in and found out as much as we could about the organization through PAM and online. Um, Dylan covered most of our performance key elements, but um, what really makes Hope unique, as we said before, is that you accept any student with any disability, ranging from ADD to autism, and anywhere in between. Um, and then we did a media audit, and we found that they have a Facebook and a Twitter. Their Twitter handle wasn't exactly active, and that um, they have no budget for communications and no media lists. So um, that was definitely considered a internal impediment that they had no funding for communication. Externally, some of their impediments were that they um, were in a 
location where sometimes it was difficult to get to the school and kids were coming from far um, locations and then also the tuition was high for some people so that was definitely an impediment externally. Um, their competitors both indirect and direct were both public and private schools um, and then I just wanted to talk about some of the public indirect um, competitors. East Baton Rouge Parish schools have um, special needs like capabilities, but um, the reason why we compete with them so much is because they uh, have no they have no tuition, so they can they can come easily. Yeah. And so a little background on the situation research we did is that Hope Academy has had an LSU group come in before and um, create a communication plan, but they did not create a plan that could be continued um, throughout the year. Um, so we really found that the situation Hope Academy is in right now is a lack of funds and a lack of awareness, and this is due to lack of time and money for a communications team to be at the school full time. Um, the communications that the school has right now are Facebook, Twitter, and a monthly newsletter, and very little advertising due to the low budget. Um, the Facebook pages and Twitter are both run by a volunteer from the school. Um, the consequence of this situation is that the school isn't really able to um, carry out their mission to the fullest because of the lack of funding, um, they need you know, better facilities for the school, and so we hope that by implementing a communication plan all year long, that they would be able to raise those funds and get more students to come to the school um, to better carry out their mission. Um, we decided to put together a survey to collect some quantitative data to see how we could best help the school um, get those needs. Um, there was a short survey, just took about five minutes, and it was 20 questions. We passed it out to doctor's offices in the area so that parents and children with special needs could hopefully fill out this form and so we could find out what they know. Um, we will talk a little bit more about what we found out from the survey later. Um, early in our research process, we um, felt that it was important to determine who our key publics were. So our key, three key publics were parents and guardians, who have children with special needs and learning disabilities, donors, and we also felt that doctors who care for um, children with special needs and learning disabilities were also a key public. We also looked at Hope Academy's customers and we felt that their primary customer was parents and guardians who have children with learning disabilities and special needs. Um, Hope Academy's producers include their board of trustees, the administration and the staff at Hope Academy. Also, their enablers are specialty doctors who have expertise and education related to the field. And um, also, we felt that parents were also enablers, who parents who work with organizations that deal with learning disabilities because they're often passionate about seeing students have the opportunity to get a quality education. And last but not least, their limiters include their direct and their indirect competitors, which Maddie spoke about earlier. Okay, so within our key publics, our demographics uh, encompass two generations, Generation X and Y, which are also known as millennials. Generation X are consumer spenders, and they specifically like a customized product. So one of the benefits when we were targeting our key publics is that we have a customized product, which really caters to their needs. Alrighty, we had two main goals. The first was to change the reputation by increasing, uh, change the reputation of the school and uh, also raise public support to help sustain day-to-day -day maintenance expenses, student scholarships, and expand educational offerings. Our first main objective was to raise awareness and um, increase attention by 10%. Our second main objective was to increase attention um, to specifically raise um, money, ex approximately $2,000 for the fundraising event. We use the following channels to reach our key publics. I'll discuss some of the deliverables later on in the presentation, but I have to say that our strongest communication channel was news media. We were able to lock down a feature story with WVLA, NBC 33, which was affiliated with NBC, I mean, Fox 44 as well. So that was a very strong aspect. We were able to um, use this, this 
news media outlet was actually one of the main outlets that our key public uses to find news information. Okay, for our event, we implemented a corn toss tournament and named Toss for Hope, and we were given no budget to put on the event, so it was strictly up to Expression PR to gather resources for the event. Um, our team was able to obtain monetary donations and door prizes donations from family, friends, and local businesses. We charged each team of two $40 to participate, and we welcomed children, young adults, parents, and guardians of all ages to attend. And Jan Childs, you can see right there, PTA president of Hope Academy, and that is her son Christian. Um, she spoke at the event about her experience with Hope Academy and this was a very emotional and heartwarming moment for all attendees and it really gave our event an authentic feel. And we also had an area set up for attendees to leave a lending hand on a Toss for Hope banner we created. You can see it right there. And we later provided the banner to the Hope Academy as a gift from all the event attendees. And the theme for our event was centered around Tossing for Hope to build a brighter future and we used the school's colors red, green, and yellow throughout the event. And we had corn toss sets set up in the school's front yard and we ended up having 13 teams participate. And for food, on the left we had frogs, po'boy, and catering come out for the event. And some of the messages that were mentioned at the event were the school provides the highest level of education possible for students with development or learning disabilities and their curriculum utilizes research-based methods to meet each student's needs, and the school ensures that there is a low staff-to-student ratio. Here are some of the deliverables that we provided to promote our campaign. We used a press release to send out to news and print media before and after the event. We also sent sponsor letters, thank you letters, and print flyers to local Baton Rouge businesses to promote um, and foster relationships with donors. And we also developed an internal deliverable for Parents of America to use. That is a social media policy, and that was used as a guide for media usage of stakeholders and staff of Hope Academy. Throughout the duration of our campaign, we were able to reach our target audience, mainly as Alex shared through our deliverables, especially through the WVLA story, because that reached you know, most of our people who gather their news from local news stations. Um, we also saw an increase in awareness after administering the survey for the second time. We saw that there was a 2% increase in awareness of Hope Academy in the greater Baton Rouge area. And also, last but not least, we were able to raise approximately $1,000 through our event. Expression PR thoroughly enjoyed working with Hope Academy, and Hope Academy looks forward to working with LSU in the future. Um, we have some stewardship suggestions for future LSU campaign groups to use when they're working with the client. We would like to emphasize that the client should implement an annual fundraiser to gain a loyal audience that looks forward to the yearly event. Also, they should utilize a social media strategy that we've developed to foster relationships with the key publics. They should also continue building relationships with the local media as, the, as we said before, the key publics definitely look at local news media as their main avenue for news. And they should continue to implement a communication strategy into the future to build a positive reputation for the community. So, like to thank you for learning about Expression PR's campaign and we have to say that we've learned a lot and we're going to bring these skills into the career our, our future and we want to open the door for uh, questions if you